good for me to start. Okay, great. Calling to order the Committee of the Whole meeting for Diamond Lake School District 76. Roll call, please. Ms. Angarola. Ms. Bayless. Here. Mr. Becker. Here. Ms. Hale. Here. Mr. Houtman. Here. Mr. Candela. Here. Ms. Sullivan. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We now open the floor for public comments on agenda items. Do we have any public comments this evening? We have such a nice full house. Welcome. Then we will um, turn it over to presentations. All right. We have two presentations this evening. Um, the first one, we're doing something new this year with our Sparkle On Core Values. We used to recognize staff members each month internally, and we would share it out with just our staff and our teams here. But we thought because it's such a prestigious thing that they're doing, our principals are working with their building leadership teams to recognize staff members that really exemplify the core value each month. So last month for September, we focused on service, which is one of, um, as you look at the letters, it's service, passion, advocacy, respect, kindness, love, equity, opportunity, and nurture. And so in addition to that, because we're always looking to level up and get better, we're also including uh, students um, in our recognition. So this month, we're going to recognize three staff members, one from each building. I'm going to have the principals um, come up and recognize each of those staff members and share the reasons why they're recognizing them and celebrating them tonight. And then we're going to do the same with our students. So we're recognizing a student from each of our buildings. And then we're going to have a staff member who nominated that student and then was voted upon by our building leadership team to get the award tonight for Sparkle or uh, service. So I'm going to have Miss Sunny Morley, principal of DLS, come on up and recognize her staff member. Hello. Um, so I am recognizing nurse Alyssa King. Um, she serves DLS with care and compassion. Her service to our students and staff is seen each day. When she arrives at school, she often has guests already waiting at her door. And then the buses arrive and she often goes outside before the bell even rings. She greets students, brings them in. Sometimes they're just a little sad. Sometimes they're a little sick. Um, after her initial visit with students, she always checks on them throughout the day, whether symptoms are gone or not. She listens to all the replays from the playground. She also hears symptoms that she may not have ever heard before. <laughs> she has magic cold water that can often cure any ailment. And she can be heard talking to families with care and compassion. She jumps in whenever anyone has a question about anything and we're lucky to have her serving at DLS to our staff and our students. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> That's it. So um, Laura was not able to be here tonight. Uh, she's in the throes of homecoming season with her two high school boys. But uh, I do want to read the ways in which um, she has exemplified service for our school. So Laura, Laura is a model of service, uh, a model of the service characteristic every single day. She has been integral in the process of, of addressing student and staff needs. Um, Laura is the special education lead, and she finds time to meet with, engage the needs of the whole department daily. She seeks information and gathers input and puts that input into practice on a daily basis. She is a pillar of culture for our, our school community. And everyone, um, everyone is when she's not in the building, everybody's like, where's Laura? Because she, she just really is a help in all in all areas. Um, she strives to serve others in every single way. Um, she, she has put forth um, 
so many plans that are creative and collaborative with parents and families from around the district. She stops at nothing to meet the needs of every student that she encounters. So um, Laura, if you're watching, um, congratulations. And she'll obviously be honored uh, at our school. So Laura Rogers is uh, our service recipient for this month. All right. Uh, it's best for last here. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming in. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to, to nominate uh, Barb Padour, our eighth grade science teacher, as the West Oak Middle School's uh, uh, superintendent spotlights, uh, spotlight for service here this year. Um, Barb, uh, this has been this has been a, a matter of a little over a year here, but Barb has quickly become a, yeah, she's even getting excited. Um, Barb has quickly made a, a positive impact in our school, uh, as well as our eighth grade and science teams. Barb has an infectious personality that draws students and staff towards her, as she is always upbeat, encouraging, and, and always a little silly. Um, along with this, Barb has, a, a, has been a figure in our school that, that people have learned to depend on as well. Uh, she works extremely hard, cares deeply about her, her students that she serves, as well as the colleagues that she gets to work with every day. Uh, she has coached, uh, volunteered, attended community events, and she is our NJHS sponsor, our eighth grade team lead, and she's part of our PBS and BLT teams as well. And this is after a little over 13 months of being with us. Um, needless to say, her selfless service makes our school and everyone around her better, and this does not go unseen and unnoticed. So thank you, Barb, for allowing our school to level up, lean in, and sparkle on. You make us better. Thank you. Congratulations. Would you like to say anything? No. I would. Okay. Well, maybe um, I don't feel like I deserve it, but I feel like that's such nice things to say and it means a lot. Um, and I think it's really because of the people that I'm around and the students that I have and this team here. Um, teaching for 10 years in Las Vegas is just such a different environment. So this really means a lot. I love it here. I love the kids. I love everyone. You guys have been really supportive. So this is for you. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're going to recognize our students. So if this is moment. Oh, okay. So our Diamond Lake student is on the way. So we're going to do a little reverse order. Mr. Pearson, would you like to? the honors okay all right so um in that kind of in that same vein that the person that we wanted to um to nominate for tonight uh, really our, our first time doing this so i, I appreciate dr sharma lewis uh, in allowing us to to really to really recognize our kids we do that you know in regards to our students of the month but this is really kind of a level up as uh being that this is the first month this is the the first the first person that our building leadership team picked out of 277 kids in our school. So, um, and that is and that is Miss Raquel Flores. Um, Raquel, Raquel uh, embodies an abundance of, of the sparkle on qualities that make her a true gem in our Wolfpack and a pleasure to have in the classroom this year. Starting off the year, starting off the year strong, she approached, uh, she approached Miss Fedora uh, about uh, organizing volunteers for the back to school bash. She showed true leadership with, right, for her NJHS members and provided a wonderful opportunity for our students to volunteer Volunteer and be more involved in the Diamond Lake community. Beyond that, she's a leader in the classroom and always shows respect, kindness, and eagerness to learn. Uh, she deserves to be recognized as a role model for her peers, and I, I know she will continue to thrive this year. So stay amazing, Raquel. So you want to come on up? Congratulations. You want to say anything? Um, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so Mr. Carrera is going to um, translate for our Welcome everyone. So our first recipient of our service award for Sparkle on Characteristics is Omar Aguilera Rocha. Um, Omar has been, uh, he started our year with persistence, 
and he has really tried his best in order to achieve. And then he's now turned that achievement into helping others inside the classroom. So Omar has found, uh, according to his teachers, and from what I've seen, he's found joy in serving others through teaching them what he knows and also translating for them in the classroom. Omar is a um, a, serv a servant to his teachers in the classroom as well. He loves taking on classroom jobs and he loves helping others in any possible way that he can. Omar empezó el año con un poquito de dificultad en matemáticas, pero demostró mucha determinación, persistencia, dedicación a su a clase, a sus alumnos, y ahora ha tomado esas dificultades y ha decidido, ha, ha hecho un esfuerzo por ayudar a sus, a, a sus alumnos a, a, a también traducir diferentes cosas y también ayudar a su clase, a también que ellos también puedan entender más y ha hecho un gran esfuerzo en ahora servir a sus, su, su clase y sus maestros han, han visto su dedicación y su deseo de no solamente entender, pero también dar su apoyo a sus a sus alumnos que sirven en su clase con él. He's taking the long way around. <laughs> He's got a good high five. You. So with grace, we're going to come up and follow this. First and foremost, thank you, everybody, for giving us some time to be able to meet with you this evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Myers, Superintendent, District 1, 2075. With me this evening is Kevin Quinn. He's our Director of Buildings and Grounds. Our purpose for being here tonight is to want to make sure we're able to inform our entire community about the referendum that is being proposed on this ballot. It's not to ask anybody to vote one way or another. What we do want to do is share with you what we see as needs for our community and for our students, for the students who are currently being able to prepare to come up to the high school for once they get to us so that we know we have the facilities that meets the expectations that you expect of us to be able to provide your students that you're sending to us. How do I change slides? You got the clicker? Is Omar still here? You could help us. Wait. All right. So the first part, why is it needed? Uh, the high school was built in roughly 1958. It's at 63 years of age. So it's coming towards its end of life expectancy. We know we've experienced some times where we've had mechanical failures with water main breaks, where we've actually had to close school down to be able to repair those. Also, what we have seen is what we're asking and looking for. The building was made for 1,500 students. The areas that we're looking to be able to address are those main original parts of the building, or they're the areas that simply we don't have anymore for space. The example I'd give you with enrollment is right now when we did this uh, presentation, we are at 2,229 students. In the month of September, we had 35 new students enroll. And that's been an average for us over the past few years. So what you can see is our growth is still happening. We need to plan for that and have that space. And what we've done is been able to look at, get feedback from our community, because this is the second time that we're asking for this. And the board decided to reduce it by $25 million ask, which equated to roughly 36,000 square feet while maintaining the pillars of what we still believe need to be done. So the priorities that were laid out were the maging infrastructure. Um, you'll see in the video that we do have, there's two and a half miles of pipe that are original. They need, that needs to be replaced. Um, you have aging boilers that need to be replaced and it's not due to lack of preventive maintenance. 
we have been taking well uh, maintained equipment, but we're seeing that starting to fail more frequently to where it's not um, worth repairing anymore. The second part, when you look at safety and security keeps coming up and it's more and more a priority for our public schools all the time. What we wanna to look to do is have our fire suppression systems updated. We wanna have better sight lines in our hallways and upgrade our infrastructure for our technology and our cameras as they look down the hallways so that we're able to have a more secure facility for our students. Next slide. Instructional space. What we are mainly looking at is we know we're still growing. While there might be a narrative that schools in Illinois are decreasing, Lake County is still growing. There was a study by Lake County Partners that found the southwest corner of Lake County, which are our school districts, is still seeing consistent growth or above average growth compared to the rest of Lake County. I contribute that to the communities that we live in and the schools and the park districts that we work with in that families want to live in our area and that's why they're coming here. So we're still seeing that growth. We're anticipating our growth by school year 29-30, being at uh, just, oh, just over 2,400 students. Our capacity, we're at capacity right now, and we're gonna be going over that in the next four years. The career and technical ed space, Mundelein used to be known for the current technical ed. They used to build airplanes. The teacher would fly the airplane for the final. We no longer have those programs. We have to have our kids go somewhere else. What we do know right now, 800 plus of our students have said they want some type of introductory program to the trades. CTE programming is bringing the trades back to our schools. And it's not what we're used to. It's high level manufacturing. Local businesses are partnering with our students to get the experience, not only to provide them a job maybe right after school, but also to support them if they choose and want to go to college to choose to go to a two or four year program. Next slide. So some of the benefits, and I've been talking about these as we've went along, we're gonna see the increased spacing take place. One of the examples we have, we have very successful band and choir programs. Our band program currently has 240 members. Our classroom seats 80, and that's what it was designed for. We need to expand that. Our choir program has almost 100 students. Its capacity for their classroom is 40. So we're looking to add that space. We're looking to add the cafeteria space. Our cafeteria sits 450 students. You do the math, 450 students is not enough to be able to get through an entire day for a lunch period when you have 2,200 students. That's why the juniors and seniors currently are allowed to leave the building. Uh, of course, if they meet certain criteria, which I heard leveling up, make sure they're able to go out in the community. And then really addressing the overcrowding that we're seeing while adding in classroom space. This proposal has 17, what I'd say is traditional classrooms being added in addition to another six to eight, which I'd say is non-traditional spaces, whether that's multi-purpose space um, or CTE space coming in for programming that we, that we have not had available to us. Next slide. I'm gonna ask Kevin Quinn to come up next. We're gonna show you a brief video. It's gonna give you a, sh um, a view of the entire layout of the building and you can hopefully pause it and expand on that as we go. We'll pause it here. So as Dr. Myers stated, uh, this gives us a chance to reset the time clock on our aging facility. And so when we look at that, the building uh, was built in 1958, uh, construction lifespan of 50 to 75 years for uh, school buildings. So we're there, we need, to, we need to address that aging infrastructure. We also need to address expanded programming. Programming is much different now than it was in 1958, certainly 1980, uh, CTE, uh, Band and choir programs have expanded. The nature of learning's changed significantly. So this plan addresses those items and you'll see the addition of classroom spaces that weren't in that first, first re referendum ask. Uh, that's been an addition in here. So we did reduce the scope, we reduced the ask of it, uh, but we never lost sight of what those priorities were. And so we have expanded adding classrooms. As we go, uh, we'll take a look.
Okay. So as we saw on that uh, two slides ago, actually, was our student services area. So we're trying to consolidate, make more sense of how our students function in the building and how our staff is able to provide appropriate supports inside of our building. So centralizing the student services with the dining commons that we lack currently gives that functionality of the space. We don't want our students leaving campus uh, for lunches. They miss the opportunity of forming the community inside of our building uh, that we want our students to have. It's a community. We want them to have those relationships. We also want them to have access to student supports during the course of a day, counselors, college counselors, meeting with peers for tutoring. So we want them to have that experience. We currently don't lack the space or we currently lack the space for that. So when we look at the dining commons, it opens up and provides more flexible seating uh, for our students during the course of a day. Our cafeteria is currently so crowded and uncomfortable. Several weeks ago, we had oppressively uh, hot weather outside. It was 94 degrees. Uh, for two days in a row inside of our cafeteria during our lunch hours. I think we can all agree that's not an acceptable way for our students to have their lunch. Uh, nonetheless, just enjoying each other's company. These are the CTE spaces that we talked about, uh, shop classes, but the, the next iteration of shop classes. So it in, introduces principles of engineering. It takes what we would have seen in our wood shop and we're introducing the engineering principles, practical side of, of that basic concept. So we have trade programs, plumbing, electrical, and carpentry. In addition to that manufacturing, we've had companies come and they're willing to partner with us. Uh, they're waiting for our students. There's, there's an avenue there for students. Some students might not be ready to college, might not be geared towards college. So manufacturing, construction, the trades are options for them. Manufacturing companies will take a student out of school with experience that they've gained inside of our CTE program, offer them a job when they get out. But in addition to that, they provide them with college. They'll, they'll pay for college uh, as they become uh, in, a member of their workforce. So we're excited about these programs. Again, this was, a, uh, this was a community ask. This is a student ask. We started to roll the curriculum out this year and the programs are full. They continue to, to develop. We just don't have the appropriate space for them currently. Yeah. Our current competition gym is another 1958 component of our building, not air conditioned, accessible seating isn't there. Uh, and our, our entire student body won't fit in there. So we had an assembly a couple of weeks ago. The students are, are filling in on the floor. Some students weren't able to make it into it. Uh, the non-air conditioned space limits us for PE. In addition to that, we use our competition gym for community activities. We have blood drives. We have community job fairs uh, during the course of the year. We uh, weren't able to hold physical education classes 22 times last year for those events that come in. We don't have an alternate space. So when we host those programs, we have to have our students, our wellness staff be creative on what they're doing, but that's, that falls short of being an appropriate physical education space. In addition to that, our competition gym uh, is, is used all the time. And so we, we lack the ability to hold things that didn't exist in 1958, robotics tournaments, advanced choir concerts, band concerts. We just lack the space for that. So we're looking as these, when we look at here and we see courts on those spaces, they're much more than that. They're multi-purpose spaces. We're looking at the acoustics and the sound and the lights inside of these spaces so that we can host those events. Those are also district revenue generators a uh, choir can raise a significant amount of money to support the choir program. Same with band, same with robotics. So we're looking for 
using these as multi-purpose spaces. Currently, our students show up about 6 a.m. in the morning for practices. They're going home at 9.30 in the evening. We're trying to make that so that the students don't have to show up early and that they can be home by 7 o'clock with their families. And then we can start looking at how our community can utilize these facilities. We've talked with our feeder programs, uh, youth, youth soccer, youth lacrosse. So, and in clement weather for our own programs, our band currently lacks a space to practice. This will provide those, those uh, alternate spaces for them. Our performing arts spaces, our auditorium, uh, choir, and band rooms. Again, the band room was designed initially in 1958 uh, to seat 80 students. We currently have 240 students. Our choir program exceeds by far the number of students that was originally designed for. Appropriate spaces, those are housed currently inside of 1958 parts of our building. Uh, inappropriate spaces, lack of appropriate acoustics inside of the building or inside of those spaces, uh, in spite of that, they're successful programs, wildly successful programs. And so we want the student experience. We want as many students that want to participate in those programs to participate so they can find their and, whether that be on a stage or a field. We want to make sure that they have access to those programs. Our auditorium will be renovated. Uh, again, that's a 1958 component of the building. We need to add acoustics. We need to look back for lighting. The proscenium opening inside of the auditorium needs to be expanded. The stage needs to be wider and deeper so our entire uh, uh, choir concert, uh, our choir uh, and our band can perform on the stage. And so we're looking to do that. Our plays, if anybody's seen the plays at our school, they're fantastic. We have to build our sets behind the stage uh, we have to build them on the stage because we lack an appropriate scene shop. This plan addresses those needs and uh, to expand our scene shop, change the seating, change the acoustics, change the lighting inside of our auditorium, increase the size and, and increase the acoustics inside of our band and choir rooms. And the Village Green, the, the district purchased the Village Green. It's a uh, golf course at uh, Winchester and Midlothian. Uh, they they uh, purchased that in anticipation of the student population getting to a point where we would need a second campus. That never came to fruition. So what we decided to do is turn this district asset into an asset for us. How do we utilize this? So we're going to have to relocate some of our athletic fields uh, because of this project, because of the expansion on the north side. So we're going to develop this. We're going to do this slowly over a period of time. If we look up at the screen, we'll have initially, we'll have one softball, one baseball field, a pitch, a multi-purpose lacrosse, football, uh, soccer field, and our tennis courts. We'll relocate those um, here at centralized on the campus. Uh, and then we've also been talking with the park district, with youth programs. How can they utilize it when we're not on there? Summertime, evenings, weekends. And so there's been a there's been a tremendous amount of input uh, from our community. And again, that's one of the things that that uh, we're very fortunate to have a community that uh, can celebrate that that closeness, those relationships, and, and expand on how we use those. So this is going to be uh, Village Green. Will uh, and that's in this this uh, plan. Uh, we'll expand those out and then we'll look at developing those over a period of time to meet the needs of not only the school, but the community. So what does it all mean? What we're looking to do and what the board did, they went out and talked to people after the last request that failed. And in talking to members, they were more interested about looking at cost and what that meant. So what that means is instead of doing a 20 year term on the bond, 
they move to go into a 30 year bond. As a result for a fair market value home of $300,000, it was able to decrease that annual amount by almost 40%. So for that home of a fair market value of $300,000, the annual investment would be $414 for the year. One of the key parts when you look at any project is it should focus on academics. And when you look at where the monies are going, 56% of those dollars are going straight towards academics. Another 36% is going towards the infrastructure and the other parts to get it updated. And the last 10% is going towards safety and security. What I would ask anybody is you start getting questions and you're not sure, utilize the webpage. There's all kinds of questions on there that you can have answered. If you have a question, you click on that question mark on the web link there, you can send us a question and we'll do our very best to respond to you within 24 hours. And it might even make it on the frequently asked question list. We have one more building tour coming up. That is Thursday. It starts at seven o'clock at the high school. Just come in the main door and you're gonna get a tour of those main areas that we just took you through on the virtual tour. And once again, I'll keep plugging the website. Any more questions, you can go to the website, or if you want, please call us as well, and we'll do our best to answer your questions timely. That's it. Thank you. That concludes our presentations for this evening. So if our family and visitors would like to leave, you are welcome to, and then we'll wait, Mrs. Morley, until um, she comes. Okay. Okay. We understand that you have other commitments, Mrs. Chabelle. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for coming. You are welcome to stay for our meeting, but that concludes our presentations for the evening. And congratulations um, to our students and our staff for their service. Okay. We will now move on to our business agenda for the evening. Up on the agenda, we have two items for review and two items for action. The first item on the agenda is the omnibus vote agenda, and that is up for review this evening and will be voted on um, at our next October meeting. The next item on our business agenda is approving the 2024-2025 goals and priorities. The result of the Diamond Lake School District 76 Board of Education accepts and approves the 2024-2025 goals and priorities as presented at the September 24th, 2024 business meeting. May I have a motion to approve, please? Mr. Becker? Mr. Candela? Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mr. Halpin? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Do you want any discussion from the contractor or no? Okay, go ahead. So for the next item is uh, the approval of the District 76 Collective Bargaining Agreement. Um, we the, There's two attachments. The first attachment is the executive summary that's provided by our attorney that went through all of the language changes and then the salary um, updates. So that's just kind of all of um, everything summarized into a two-page document. And then the th second attachment is the edited version version, or it's unformatted yet, I should say. We're waiting for the IFT to, uh, to provide that for us. So as soon as that's provided, I will share it. But as you can see, that's the entire document, all 28 pages. But so we thought for simplicity sake and give you an overview of anything. Does anybody have any questions about that? I know we've talked about it at length at previous meetings, so. Okay, um, then we will take action on that item. Be it resolved, the Diamond Lake School District 76 Board of Education accepts and approves the 2024-2027 Collective Bargaining Agreement with the District 76 Teachers Association as presented. May I have a motion to approve, please? Move. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Becker? Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Hale? Yes. Mr. Hartman? Yes. Mr. Kandel? 
Okay, that motion is approved. Um, the last item on our agenda this evening is a review of um, press issue 115. Um, we will be taking action on that at the next meeting. There's a number of documents and a memo as part of the packet. So if everyone would like to review them and then if anyone has any questions or would like further discussion, we can do that at the next meeting. Um, unless anyone has anything they'd like to bring up now. Okay, then we will move forward with that. Um, that wraps up our business agenda for the evening. Do we have any items for board discussion? Okay, there being no items for board discussion, moving on to freedom of information requests. We had one that was fulfilled. Notices of communications, we have um, some information from CEDAL and then we have a number of fantastic District 76 highlights. I don't know if there's anything to talk about. No, no, just the you know usual moment of the month, and then our diamond edge is back, and our, our diamond edge for the start of the school year, and then of course I wanted to share that the diamond dish is back, and that now will be district wide. So thank you, Dr. Burr, for your leadership with that. And you can see we have two middle school students that are talking about um, some of the service projects that we had going on around the dis around the community. It was great. Okay, um, that wraps up notices and communications. Do we have any public comments on non-agenda items this evening? Okay, there being no public comments, we move on to others. Does anyone have anything for others? Okay, then we will adjourn to executive session for the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district the legal counsel for the district, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee or against legal counsel for the district to determine its validity. May I have a motion to approve to executive, to adjourn to executive session, please? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. I'm sorry, Sunny. Maybe we can do it um, at the next yeah. meeting. Um, and 